Hello, my name's Colette. Welcome to Practical Divination, where today we're going to talk about pendulum. Pendulums are a tool to connect with our own subconscious to help us divine some answers about things. I do think sometimes they're quite limited with what they can do and you have to make sure that they're tuned in properly uh, so that you can be kind of sure of their accuracy. Um, if you're using a pendulum just to sort of find things or whatever, you can literally just hold it and let it start spinning or having any action whenever you're getting closer uh, to the object you've lost. And I was going to say that, you know, here's an example, you could... Um, find your mobile phone by using a pendulum and then I thought well that's a bit daft because you could just get someone to phone your phone and then you could hear it so that's not a good example but basically um, dowsing by pendulum can pick up on cold spots that spirits have been in. Um, I used to use mine a lot for um, finding out things on maps um, toxic land, a sense of you know, where would be a good place for a house where wouldn't um, and that's more of the, the sort of old-fashioned way of doing it, finding out things just like men would use dowsing rods um, in the past to find water and um, some of your uh, people that are really good at finding oil um, can use a, a form of dowsing and sometimes it's just their own hands or their own feeling. You don't necessarily need um, a dowsing rod or a pendulum but they do um, kind of exaggerate things a little. So anyway, the pendulum. What do you need? Well, the pendulum used to be just seen as a metal bob with some sort of chain or string attached to it. The bob uh, part has to be heavy enough to pull down and um, light enough to move with small indications of um, movement coming from your subconscious. Um, most pendulums now are crystals. But the first one I ever used um, was a kind of old wife's tale where I literally took my wedding ring off when I was pregnant, put it on a thread and then got someone to dangle it above my pregnant belly. And it was kind of uh, goes round clockwise for a girl and back and forth for a boy. Um, and that's something that um, a lot of women quite enjoy doing. How accurate it is, well, it was accurate enough um, for the other people when I did it for them, but not necessarily for myself. Um, so the pendulum I have is uh, one just from New Age Shop. Um, it's blue topaz. I chose it because I just like the colour and the feel of it. But before you can use a pendulum, you have to tune it in. And you have to find out what um, is its yes and its no, because the main thing you'll do with a pendulum is probably just ask it for yes, no answers. Um, and it's important that once your pendulum's tuned in, that it's just your pendulum and no one else gets to play with it or whatever. Um, so you can either make your own pendulum. Some people like to use jewellery that's round their neck and has a heavy sort of um, pendant on it. Or just buy yourself one. Um, they're not expensive at all. So... When I started to tune in my pendulum, this is an awkward angle because I, you would really put your um, your arm on the table and allow the pendulum to swing, but with your arm supported. But with the way this camera is, I can't do that just now. So I'm just going to show you what happens. So it'll not be divining, it's just showing you, okay? So normally you would hold the pendulum by the little um, sort of bobble that's on the top. Um, this one's quite long actually, uh, the pendulum I had before was about six, seven inches um, and I think five to six inches is enough. Once it gets longer than that you get into all sorts of tangles. But I do love this one. So basically you ask your pendulum to tell you what it decides is yes. Now with my pendulum a yes is a circle. I give it a chance to really move. And it will build up momentum so that there's no doubt that, you know, this movement is its yes movement. Um, some people find when they pull the pendulum straight and try to hold it straight that it doesn't move at all. But most pendulums will take off. If you feel you don't want to encourage movement in it, just slightly pull it up the way. That should give it enough movement to get started on whatever it needs to do. So very much if I were to ask a question, you know, um, will the interview today go well? Um, then it would be, uh, I'll just hold it straight again. 
I, well, since I'm confusing it now because that isn't a real question, but it would be a yes if it were going to go that way. Now, my no for this um, is actually back forth. So if I were to ask it something and the answer was no, we would get a back forth swing, which would become greater the longer it began to swing. Now, if you get a sort of midline that's like, ooh, you know, it's sort of half a circle, half back forth, I take that as my pendulum, the universe or my own subconscious saying, um, no, you've either asked the wrong question or not today. But the problem um, with pendulums is that they can give a false answer if you don't ask the correct question. So say you wanted to move house and you your eye on a particular house um, and you needed to sell your own house first. So if you ask the pendulum, will I move house? The pendulum, if you're going to move house at any point in the next 20 years, will say yes. But that's not the answer you need. So you have to say, will I move house within the next six months? Um, and then if it says yes, you will. Uh, but if it says no, then you can say, okay, will I move house within the next year? And if it says kind of um, no, you could say, well, is the problem me selling my own house? And if it says yes, then you can follow through on that. So it's about getting a sequence of questions that actually uh, can't really have muddled answers. And certainly I'm very aware of always setting a time limit to my questions, you know. Um, um, will this happen to be? Or will I move house within four months, etc.? Um, and that's the way the, the pendulum answers, to be honest with you. It's, it's a, a very, very good tool. Um, it's as accurate as you make it. You, you have to allow the pendulum to be part and parcel of you um, and to be sort of your companion. You know, a lot of people don't really go anywhere without the pendulums. I'm a bit more like that with my tarot deck because I do find them uh, there's more depth to an answer. But I've also used the tarot with the pendulum. Um, say I am asking a question of the tarot, but I want to add in more randomness so the universe can talk a wee bit more. Um, I would maybe say choose four cards in the tarot that I know mean certain things um, and then flip them over, give them a kind of shuffle, put them out on the table and say, right, I'm going to put my pendulum on top, on top of these cards one by one. Um, give me a yes answer if that's the card I have to read. And then you literally just hold your pendulum over each card and take it up, make it a wee bit sort of solid again. And if it's going to be a yes, then it will spin above that card. That to me wouldn't be enough. And if I moved it to the next one and I got a nothing again, and I say I moved it to the next one, whoa, away it goes. That's an answer. So use a pendulum on its own if you wish. Um, use it to define yes, no answers. That's that's the basic and good way of doing it. Or use it to have a bit of fun with a you know walk about maybe a place that you feel there could have been a spirit. Keep it you know straight and then see. Uh, and really, uh, I would say smudge your pendulum. Um, you know, make it nice and fresh, or leave it out for a full moon every so often, and enjoy it. Um, there's more on pendulums and dowsing in my book, How to Read an Egg. Um, that's just a book on odd divination, but uh, there's certainly more on pendulums than that. So, if you want to get yourself a wee pendulum, and off you go. Many blessings. <laughs>